Good evening, and welcome to Central's Reflections on Holy Week. Readings from the greatest week in the history of the world. Let us go to God in prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for, for this moment in which we are able to remember the, the great sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus made on our behalf, Father God. Thank you for the scriptures that record it, and thank you for, that you've given us the opportunity to, to fully embrace it and experience it. And we pray, Father God, that, that it would make a difference, not only in our lives, but on all the lives of the people who are fortunate enough to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Holy Week, the days leading up to Easter summons to us all to go deeper. It is a day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment journey. Going deeper is paying closer attention to scripture that gives us insight into what our Savior faced walking day to day to the cross. As we walk step by step with him during the last days of his earthly ministry, reflect. We begin with Sunday. It was a spring day in the year 30. It is the beginning of Passover, the most sacred week of the Jewish year. Jesus rode into Jerusalem from the east to an adoring crowd, riding on a donkey, a symbol of peace. From the west, Pilate entered Jerusalem with an army on horses, proclaiming the kingdom of Caesar, the power of the empire. Is it by chance? Did Jesus plan it on purpose that he would ride into Jerusalem on the donkey? A symbol of peace proclaiming the kingdom of God? Be careful, Jesus. Do you want to be seen as a rebel? As a revolutionary? Later that day, he went to Bethany, where he stayed with his friend Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. The next day was Monday, and as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing at a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to it, find, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area. Jesus began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple doors. It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priest and all the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise? And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany where he spent the night. On Tuesday, Jesus and his disciples returned to Jerusalem. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the people for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus. We, we don't, don't know. No. Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. 
Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. They said, Teacher, we know that you're a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for the paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's. So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and, and put them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is for people to see. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Woe to you, you teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites, you hypocrites. You, hypocrites. you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites, hypocrites. You, you, hypocrites. you travel over land and sea with a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Woe to you, you teachers of the law, Pharisees, you, you hypocrites, you, hypocrites. you, you hypocrites. hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, you teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites, you hypocrites. You, you, hypocrites. you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites, hypocrites. you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on inside, the inside are full of the bones of the dead and, and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people to be as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law, you hypocrites, hypocrites. you, you hypocrites. hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part in them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourself that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. You, you, you snakes. You, you root of vipers. You root of vipers. How will you escape being condemned to hell? 
Therefore, I am sending you prophets and sages and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zedekiah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come on this generation. Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Teachers of the law and Pharisees, he has shown, he has shown you, O oh man, what is required to, justly, to do justly, to mercy, love and mercy, mercy, and walk, and walk humbly with humbly your God. Of God. God. Teachers of the law, teachers of the law, and Pharisees. Pharisees. As Jesus was sitting on the mountain of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Let no one go on the housetop or go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one go in the field, uh, let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. So if anyone tells you, There, there he is, is, out, out in, in the wilderness. wilderness. Do not go out, or... Do not believe it, for as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you will know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's, it's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. God's kingdom is like 10 young virgins who took oil lamps and went to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The silly virgins took lamps, but no extra oil. The smart virgin, virgins took jars of oil to feed their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him, and they fell asleep. In the middle of the night, someone yelled out, He's here! The bridegroom's here! Go out and greet him! He's here! The bridegroom's here! Go out and greet him! The ten virgins got up and got their lamps ready. 
silly virgin said to the smart ones, Our lamps are going out. Lend us some of your oil. There might not be enough to go around. Go buy your own. They did. But while they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. When everyone who was there to greet them had gone into the wedding feast, the door was locked. Much later, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked at the door saying, Master, we're here, let us in. He answered, do I know you? I don't think I know you. What I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch, watch. keep watch. Keep watch. 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 You, you do not, not know, know, you know, you know, know, know the day, day or the hour. hour. As you know, the Passover is two days away. The Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. He returned to the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha in Bethany. Then the chief priests and elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. They said, But not during the feast, or, they may, or there may be a riot among the people. We are in awe of Jesus, and the priests and the rulers hate him. If they tried anything, there might very well be, have been a riot, not just because Passover is coming, but because Jesus showed his power, authority over disease, nature, and death. We saw Jesus heal the man with the withered hand, give blind Bartimaeus his sight, Heal the woman with the issue of blood. We were there when Jesus fed a total of 10,000 people with 12 loaves of bread and a few fish. We stood in awe when he raised the dead daughter of a ruler to life and Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, after being dead for four days. And yet, his most profound miracle of new life is the one he performs in the lives of each one who comes to him. As people were drawn to his message, it incurred the anger and jealousy of the chief priests and elders. And rather than sparking a spirit of worship, it inflamed their hearts with envy and murderous intent. And this brings us to Wednesday. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. One of the 12, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. So, so ends the reading the of the Word of God. God. Word of God. Thank you for joining us for the first exciting day of Holy Week. And though we know how the story ends, if you're feeling the way I'm feeling, I'm excited to see what happens tomorrow. So please join us tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on all of our networks on Instagram Live, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and especially on live stream, as we continue with the exciting story of Jesus' last week on earth. Will you pray with me? Father God, 
we thank you that our Lord did not turn back, though he knew what he was facing, though he knew the pain that was ahead. Lord God, he, he also, for the joy set before him, continued to walk that journey for our behalf. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.